The movie Steve Jobs is a biopic about, you guessed it, Steve Jobs. He's the founder of Apple and responsible for the creation of things like the Mac, the iMac, iPhone, iPod, pretty much all things that begin with an I. You get it. Anyways, moving on. So this film shows him as the stubborn and arrogant yet forward thinking and visionary creator that he was and it depicts him in many of his struggles with successfully getting his vision for a computer on the market while trying to push the world into a new age of computerization. Meanwhile, he also has to deal with his complicated relationship with his daughter Lisa. The story takes place over a time frame of 14 years from 1984 to 1998 showing Jobs moving from failure to success with his computer products and going from not wanting to even admit that Lisa is his daughter to mending his broken relationship with her. The film structures its plot by splitting up the main story into three distinct segments, each showing what Jobs is doing backstage and the important conversations he is having before three important product launch presentations. The first act takes place in 1984 with the launch of the Macintosh. Here we see an overconfident Jobs having to deal with different problems before the launch, ranging from getting his team to fix the Mac's voice demo glitch, to arguing with his daughter's mother about whether Lisa is even actually his daughter. The second act moves straight to 1988, where after the commercial failure of the Mac and being fired from Apple, Jobs prepares for the launch of the next computer. He already knows that this computer will fail commercially, but is certain it will be enough to get him back to Apple. The final act happens 10 years later with the launch of the iMac, where Jobs is back at Apple and is finally going to release a seemingly successful computer, along with finally making amends with his daughter Lisa. Any events that do not take place right before one of these launches, such as the events of Steve Jobs being fired from Apple and later coming back to the company, are covered in flashbacks or through the two quick montages that take place between the three main segments. Because the three acts take place in three different years and are centered on the launches of three different products, great care needed to be taken by the filmmakers to make sure that each act was distinct. Several aspects of the filmmaking process are employed to help create these distinctions, from differences in the musical score, the costuming, and the production design. But perhaps one of the most unexpected yet important things that differentiates the three acts is the use of different film stocks. The first act is recorded on 16mm Kodak film, the second act on 35mm Kodak film, and the third act on digital from an Ari Alexa. Each of these types of film exhibit unique properties that serve important purposes in their respective segments. In the 1984 segment, the use of 16mm gives the image a very rough and almost unprofessional feel. The image is incredibly grainy and filled with minor specks and scratches that the filmmakers haven't really even bothered to clean up in post. It lacks the refined imagery of more professional video and film formats, and because of it, this part of the movie is about as analog and old time looking as you can get for a big budget feature nowadays. Giving the first act of the movie this unpolished look clearly places us in the pre-digital world of 1984, where society was still operating on analog technology and any digital tech was still quite unrefined and not too powerful. The 1988 segment uses 35mm film. This upscale in film size is quite apparent, giving the image a much cleaner look. The film grain is still there, but it's not as obvious as the 16mm, and most of the specks and scratches are cleaned up this time. It fixes a lot of the unrefined aspects of 16mm while remaining distinctly analog. Also, a nice added effect of the 35mm is the shallower depth of field, resulting in a more cinematic look that helps enhance the more refined feel. The use of 35mm for the second act shows the transitionary period from an analog to a digital world that Steve Jobs is helping usher in. At this point in time, technology has improved, but the world is still predominantly analog. At the end of the 1988 segment, the film reel runs out and the digital screen is powered on, bringing us into the final act set 10 years later in 1998, which is shot on digital. With the third act being digital, the images now have a clean and refined look that is almost impossible to get on film. There's an extreme lack of grain and everything in each shot is about as clear as it can be. Like a good computer screen, everything is sharp and precise. Now some of you might be ready to argue that film looks superior to digital, and believe me, I would normally be one of those people, but in this case what looks better in that sort of sense is not really the point. The use of digital is showing how Steve Jobs and his iMac have helped bring the world into the digital age. And this can only be shown through digital film, which, regardless of whether it looks better than film, gives a clean and sharp image that film never could. The sharp imagery embodies the refined and polished look that Steve Jobs wanted computers to have. 
finish up, Steve Jobs makes Stellar use of three different types of film to help tell its story. It visually shows the audience Jobs' role in the transition from the analog to the digital world through the switch from 16mm to 35mm to digital film as the plot progresses. By having three different types of film serve the story in one movie, it becomes easy to see how different types of film can serve a movie aesthetically. Each type of film has its purpose, regardless of whether it quote unquote looks the best. Whether it be digital or actual film, 16mm, 35mm, full frame sensor or crop sensor, clean and sharp or rough and grainy, they all have their own important qualities that can visually help filmmakers effectively tell their stories. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about.